Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, and today I'm installing a new Pentair Teleflow VSF pump. Uh, we got uh, one of our old jobs here, where we got an old pump, and this guy is still running, but it is pulling a lot of amps, and it is on the way out. If I touch this pump right now, it is easily 200 degrees on its outer surface, and uh, we're pulling it off, and we got this this guy to go in there. Um, right now. So what I want to do today is uh, go over the programming with you on this new Pentair Teleflow VSF pump. Well, it's not that new. It's been out for a while, but it sure is a great pump because it's a little bit different than what you find on the old 011-018 model Pentair Teleflow. It's got some cool extra features that we're going to go over with today. So I'm going to get this pump installed. You guys hang out, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and uh, we'll go over the programming. Well, we got our bonding wire set. We're tied into the electrical. I want to show you something else cool about this. You can actually remove the upper display and rotate it in any direction you want so it's easier to read. Now you can even get a mounting kit to mount this thing to the wall so it can be in a convenient spot. But it pops up just like this with these four screws and you can set it in any orientation. The other great thing I like about this pump is that the electrical connections are super easy on the pump side. Super convenient. All right, well, we're all installed, and all I gotta do is come back and put just a little bit of almond colored paint on the pipes to protect them and have it match with that uh, rest of that Pentair almond we got going on over here. Uh, but let's take a few minutes while I'm cleaning up and we'll talk about some of the differences between the standard Pentair and Teleflow pump and uh, their latest version, which is the Inteleflow VSF and what uh, what some of the pluses and the minuses are. So what the, the Pentair VSF pump does is it takes and it combines the old uh, Pentair and Teleflow VF pump, which was variable flow. And it kind of joins software forces, so to speak, with the uh, original Pentair VS pump, which is variable speed. Um, the old Pentair variable flow pump was a very difficult pool, uh, pool pump to tune, to uh, manage, to take care of. It had a lot of... Um, uh, just inherent flaws and bugs and Pentair got a lot of flack over it. They heard from um, us service guys down on the ground. Um, they got together with their engineers and um, what they came up with was the uh, with the Inteleflow VSF, which is right next to me here. And um, and it's just a great pump because it combines the best of both worlds. And um, what really, really is my favorite thing about it is that I can set it for speed or RPM. I can set it for gallons per minute. And when I set it for gallons per minute, what's cool about that is no matter how full the baskets get or maybe that filter gets a little more clogged with dirt to where that flow gets reduced, the pump will then compensate by raising the RPMs uh, to make up so that I can move a certain specific gallons per minute no matter what, uh, what kind of things are happening between uh, pool maintenance visits, whether the baskets are clogged or uh, maybe we've alleviated a big clog and now it's got less resistance. So it will automatically compensate by itself when it's in flow mode in order to maintain that exact variable flow. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So why don't we uh, get this thing up programmed and I'll show you some of the differences. All right, so for the ease of seeing what the heck's going on here, I just uh, carefully snapped off the cover. But keep in mind on these things, that cover is so important. It has to be slapped closed whenever you're not using this keypad. Uh, so let's get started. I got to program the time. We're going to go ahead go ahead and hit the menu button. I've actually already primed it up. So when we go in here and hit select on settings, that is going to bring up our date and time. We hit select. That brings us into that menu. Now, look, today is May. Uh, what is today? Select. Today is the fifth month. It is the 14th, I know that, because tomorrow's the 15th, and yesterday was the 13th. Guess what year it is? Well, how about nine years later than what this is showing us, 2019. So there you go. Hit that save button, that's gonna lock that in. Let's back on out of that. Go over here to minimum and maximum. If we hit this, what this does is this allows us to set the minimum RPM this thing can run 
or the maximum. So right now it's uh, disabled, minimum, maximum. I can select, I can change that if I want to. I can actually reduce that because it's at max. I don't actually need that much juice, so we're gonna go ahead and change that to uh, about 3000 RPM because our equipment's uh, fairly far away from the pool. We just got a little um, uh, Pentair um, clean and clear 420 on this guy, so we don't need to run quite maximum RPM. So I'll hit save, it's good. Get the back out of that. Let's cruise through settings, see if there's anything else. Now device, say you had this thing programmed into an automation system where you have multiple pumps. You're gonna hit select here. What that's gonna do is it's gonna bring you into here. This by default is always pump address one. If you have multiple pumps like we do over at my sister's house, um, you've gotta change that device. So you have your first pump and your filter pump might be device one. You have a second pump, you're gonna designate that device number two. And you can look here, you can put a lot of pumps in here um, and change that number. But for all intents and purposes, if this is standalone where it's just the only thing here, like we have on this system, we don't need to mess with that or anything like that. That is just so that the automation systems can tell the different pumps apart if you have multiple uh, variable speed pumps on your system. Alarm log, that's kind of cool. Nothing going on, but this will tell you all of the different things that are going on in the alarm log. So you have that now, and that's something that we didn't have on the, the uh, Inte IntelliFlow, um, the old uh, 011018 pumps. Um, that's kind of cool as we can look at that now. Let's go back. Um, you know what? Um, let's go back here to settings. I just want to make sure we we hit everything. Date time, min max, device, alarm log, date time. So program one through eight. In the old pump, this was speeds one through eight, but because we can choose either flow or RPM, this is where we're going to program. We're going to select. I like to leave programs one through four alone. I like to program up in five, that way someone can't come over here to these buttons and mess with stuff. Those programs will stay no matter what. So to program, we hit select. This is disabled. We need to hit select again because this is what we're programming. We use the up arrow, move to schedule, hit save. Now the pump knows I'm gonna run a schedule. The question is, what is that schedule gonna be? Let's click our down arrow. That's gonna take us to flow. Now, what, the, what this means here is that if I hit select, I can choose between speed and flow. Personally, I like to run flow. I really, I really dig it. You can run speed if you want, but I like flow because like I said earlier, that flow will maintain, that RPM will go up and down to maintain that flow. So we're gonna hit save. Now this particular pool uh, runs really well at about uh, 56 gallons per minute, and that is uh, more than enough of what this um, filter can handle, being as a Pentair 420 cartridge filter. So let's do our high speed program and hit select. We're gonna bump that up to 55 gallons per minute. We're gonna hit save. Now we need to tell it how long we run it to run that way. Well here in Arizona, our cheap power comes between midnight, our start time, we're gonna leave that alone, and about 5 a.m. So um, given the size of this pool, we're probably gonna need about three and a half hours of run time for that uh, pool to run high speed. So we are gonna click the down arrow. Here's our stop time. We are gonna hit select. Now we can use the right and left arrows to change that. So let's change that to 3 a.m., 3.30. And it's really simple and intuitive, just like the old one, just that some of the buttons are labeled a little differently. So this was, this save button used to be enter and there was a couple other little things, minor things um, that they changed here on the physical keypad just to make it a little more intuitive and simple. So high speed is set, shutting off at 3.30 a.m., turning on at 12 a.m., 55 gallons per minute, it's gonna run. So if it can do 55 gallons a minute, anywhere between 450 RPMs and 30 or uh, 3,000 RPMs where we have it set, it is gonna move that water at 55 gallons a minute no matter what. Let's go back, get that button again. We're gonna move up to program number six now and we're gonna program our low speed. This is the one I want running during the day. And I still, to this day, get these buttons confused. We're gonna hit select. We are gonna change that to schedule. We are gonna hit save. We are gonna move this, keep that on flow. Now, on this, I only need to be moving about 20 gallons a minute during the day. We're gonna run this thing for 12, 14 hours. So 
I only need to run this thing about 20 gallons per minute. So if you think about that, 60 minutes in an hour, 20 gallons per minute, that is uh, 2,400 gallons per hour times 12 hours. That's gonna move us enough water. We're gonna easily turn over this entire pool well within that low speed run. And um, you can hit save. Oops, I didn't mean to hit back. Let's select that again, get back in there and move our way down. Flow 20 gallons per minute. Now we're gonna set our run time, select. We are gonna run this thing from about 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now the reason I'm doing that is that it's gonna put uh, this thing shutting off a low speed pretty close to sunset here in the summertime in Arizona. So during that daylight, this thing's just moving water at a good slow pace, keeping things circulated, keeping the water chemistry balanced, keeping the temperature uniform throughout the pool throughout the day um, that's really going to help it and it's going to reduce costs and even though this thing's running during prime time it uses so little electricity that um, it almost doesn't matter you're talking you're talking you know less than 100 watts um, during the day so it's um, it's going to be pretty good so i've got that set our, our schedules are set we are going to now go somewhere different we're going to go over to features so i click twice to get myself back to here Let's go to features. This is where I can program Quick Clean. Quick Clean is my favorite thing to use. So what Quick Clean is, is a, a one touch button, this guy right here. I push this button and this pump will run at a pre-programmed speed for a pre-programmed amount of time. When that timer runs out, this thing shifts back over to whatever it was supposed to be doing during its normal schedule. So. Pretty cool feature, I use it for backwashing, different things like that, um, or hey, storm's coming in, you got a dust storm, run out and hit that quick clean button and let that pool uh, stay on top of things while that dust is blowing. So I'm gonna set that for flow, once again, select, flow, save. We are gonna set this thing for, I'm gonna set, I'm actually set this thing for about 10 gallons a minute higher than what we have uh, for our high speed. Just so it has an extra boost, but we're not overtaxing the filter, remember. This, uh, this filter we've got right here, the faster we move water through it, the less effective the filter is at filtering. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna get, get too overboard with how much water we, we wanna move. We only wanna move enough and, and no more. So that is set, we hit save. I'm gonna go down here and set the time. And I'm gonna set this to run for about the same amount of time that my high speed program was set to run for, which was three and a half hours. That is done. Now, what I wanna show you, on speeds one through four, when we program those, we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back to our program one through eight. And I'm not gonna do any programming on this, I'm just gonna run you through so you can see what's going on here. So here we are at program one, we're gonna hit select. Now, if I select this to change this to schedule, I don't just have manual and schedule, I also have egg timer. Egg timer essentially works like quick clean, except it's just one of the buttons here. So I would hit select if I were programming this for egg timer or well, I'd hit save. That's gonna allow me to come down here. Once again, we can select speed or flow. We come over here, we can set our RPM, up or down. Once we get to here, now I can tell it, right now it's set for 10 minutes, but I can choose a different time. Maybe I want it to run for one hour. Maybe I have this for a fountain or maybe I have this set to heat the pool heater or run the pool heater where this is going to run for uh, 10 hours at a time at a higher RPM so I can heat my pool. Or maybe this is for just a water feature or something like that. So um, I set that and then this becomes a one touch egg timer button where it runs at a given RPM or flow for a given amount of time and then it shuts off and goes back to its normal schedule. the reset button and then I can just hit start stop and now this guy's gonna fire up it's gonna do its priming thing which is normal for it to come up to a high rpm and we are moving water and what it's what's super neat about this is this guy ramps up slowly I don't know if you're watching those watts right here watch what I can do I can use these right and left arrows now to scroll through RPMs or watts, and you can see our watts coming, our RPMs coming up slowly. So this thing builds in and builds in, which is really nice. It doesn't just jump up to that high speed, it builds into it. 
and uh, I did notice something as we have this thing set for 12.42 a.m. So it thinks that it's uh, 42 minutes after midnight. Uh, we'll go back in there and we'll get that fixed up here in just a moment. But I can scroll through. I can show gallons per minute on here. If I have RPM to get an idea, see I'm almost up to where I want to be on gallons per minute. I can also show the, uh, the, the positive pressure inside the pump. If um, that allows you to do some stuff on some commercial pools or if you're really trying to get fine-tuned and really get nuts, uh, you can monitor that pounds per square inch and that'll allow you to do some other uh, kind of advanced stuff there. So 848 watts right now, 55 gallons a minute. I'd say we're running a pretty good clip. Uh, that old motor we pulled out of here would be pulling at least triple that. So, um, you know, these guys save a lot, a lot of energy and, and they just they just work really well. Now, if I want to switch out my speed a little bit, make some adjustments on the gallons per minute, well, I can do that. And then maybe I want to say, well, shoot, what am I running? in the what am i running in the rpms for that and i can actually save that on the fly right now so if we hit that save button i have now on the fly just adjusted my high speed to 57 gallons per minute but the up and down arrows will allow you to change that by hitting save now i can use my right and left arrows to scroll through on my um, other other different uh, things i might monitor gallons per minute rpm watts power and of course, pounds per square inch. So uh, let's take a minute. Let's go back and we're going to fix that time real quick here. So back to settings, date and time, select. I got the date right, select. So time is uh, 2.32 p.m. at the moment. So got that set. Sorry if I'm sounding like an announcer or a radio DJ. It's what I do on the weekends is announce bicycle races. And I'm trying to get away from... An announcer voice if I can help it but still sound like I know what I'm talking about there we go hit save we are done menu fire it up and this seems gonna kick on to our low speed now so let's do this this is showing rpms right now it is gonna jump over to gallons per minute and what we'll do there it goes and let's check out our wattage here and let's check out our rpm so we're running about 1500 rpms but you can see that rpm starting to fall starting to drop as it goes um, as it descends to reach 20 gallons per minute we can look at our watts now you can see we're pulling 92 93 watts we're not moving much at all we're barely it's not even using what a light bulb an incandescent light bulb would use so um you know it just goes to show you these grace pumps are just they're just great they work all right, guys, well, I hope that video was helpful on the new Pentair Teleflow VSF pump. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, shoot us a note. You, know, you can call us at 602-456-5545. Email us at swimmingpoolscience at hotmail.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons and uh, check out the description for a link to purchase this amazing pump. Talk to you guys later. We'll see you soon.